Hello, my name is Sujit Ramachandran and I am a doctoral candidate in the Department of Pharmacy Administration. Last month, a San Jose newspaper published the story of DeAnthony, a 12-year-old boy from Oakland, California, who had to be placed in foster care to rescue him from his drug-abusive mother. Perhaps not surprisingly, a series of incidents involving DeAnthony acting out led to a psychiatrist diagnosing him with mental health problems like ADHD, depression and even bipolar disorder. He was placed on a cocktail of drugs including lithium, seroquel and risperidol. Kids like DeAnthony all across the country today are being prescribed this new generation of antipsychotics to help with their behavioral disorders. But the FDA has not actually approved the use of many of these drugs in children. In fact, health information databases like Micromedex have concluded that there is insufficient evidence that these drugs actually work. Drugs like Abilify, Seroquel or Risperidol are known to cause serious side effects in children including weight gain, diabetes, precocious puberty, not to mention dullness and drowsiness. Back in 2002, 4 out of every 100 children in the United States was prescribed an antipsychotic. Since then, this number has almost doubled. Just this year, the CDC published a study that almost 8 out of every 100 children are being prescribed either an antipsychotic or some other psychotropic substance to help with their behavioral disorders. Now given this increasing use, I believe our society needs to step up to find ways to make these drugs safer for our children. And to begin that process, I ask the question, under what circumstances are physicians prescribing antipsychotics to our children? Or in other words, what are the physician and patient factors influencing the prescription of atypical antipsychotics in children with mental health disorders? And to begin to answer that question, I reached out to over 200 physicians all across the country, including psychiatrists, general practitioners, and even pediatricians. I presented 10 simulated profiles of children with psychosis, collected the physician's treatment data, and then ran my analysis. My analysis yielded five main findings. First, psychiatrists were more likely to prescribe these drugs than general practitioners even when they were treating the same patient. Second, older kids are more likely to receive these drugs than younger ones. Third, whether the patient was a foster child or not did not really influence physician decision. Fourth, when the parent expressed concern about the use of antipsychotics, it did not really influence the physician's decision. Fifth, and perhaps most importantly, physicians were more likely to prescribe antipsychotics if they believed there was evidence supporting the use of the drug. Unfortunately, most physicians seem to extend their understanding of these drugs from adults to children when there was no evidence to do so. In conclusion, my thesis helps us better understand physician decision making in the area of pediatric mental health and highlights the importance of educating our physicians in terms of the evidence supporting use of atypical antipsychotics in children with mental health disorders. Thank you.